Hello friends. <clears throat> now we have got we have we are still in the first type of ambiguity. Ambiguities are the first type. We have seen so far. One is that the a detail is effective in several ways at once. This one detail is effective in several ways at once. That is one the Second we saw a comparison with the, a comparison for example with the several points of likeness. So this comparison with several points of likeness. A third one we saw that is uh, difference, antithesis. Antithesis. There are several points of difference. Fourth one we saw use of adjectives, comparative adjectives. All adjectives are comparative. Right? That we have seen. And the fifth one is the subdued metaphors like devour, devour, wrinkles. Now we saw that. Sixth one we saw rhythm. Rhythm can influence the meaning. And the seventh one today, that's what we are going to see continuation of the, uh, the sixth one, and then the seventh one today is. Dramatic irony. We saw that uh, diffuseness is one way to get uh, to get rid of ambiguity. That's why we saw in Spencer you don't have a, Spencer you don't have a, because the flow is very smooth. You don't have ambiguity. Also you know you you, you saw Marlowe very. You don't find ambiguities at all because it is explaining a, sing a single thought is explained in detail. Then how can there? There's no compression source. In uh, ambiguity, there should be compression, hmm? compression of ideas. As yesterday we saw now that this ripeness is so right? like that. Or you find the king Lear again. Nothing will come out of nothing. So nothing will come out of nothing. Speak again. King Lear asks Cordelia. What happens? Cordelia will say nothing. She will not say anything. To show either her love or gain her portion. So that is, there is some enigma there. Isn't it? So it is, it creates a kind of Curiosity in our minds. See, that is the dramatic irony you can say. That's an example for dramatic irony accompanied by ambiguity. Ambiguity. Okay. So then we find that you know in Sydney, the lovely Sestina of Sydney, he uses diffuseness. As a result of that, no ambiguity. So three others we have seen no ambiguity. One is Marlowe, the other is uh, Spencer, and the third one now we saw is uh, Sydney. Okay, dramatic ambiguity of judgment you will find. Say in the casket scene, casket scene in Master of Venice, a dramatic ambiguity of judgment. Three caskets, etc. You know the story, I suppose. And this is what makes Iago a very effective villain. Iago is the most effective villain in all of Shakespeare's plays. Because he speaks in, his, his words are equivocations, ambiguity source. Same thing what happens with uh, the bitches in my pattern. So then what happens is now next time, the last one we have to do is dramatic irony. And then when you are considering the first type, dramatic irony. And the supreme example, the masterly touch of Shakespeare is in that small line, strange, striking, he says now, that is what the result it make, striking, strange images of death, striking, strange images of death, striking, Strange images 
of death. Striking strange images of death. Actually, this a line I have just picked out from Kald, you can say Kald, from the speech by Rose. Rose. So this is the messenger now. Rose. Rose begins his speech like this. He says, the king hath happily received my death. The king hath, hath happily received my death. Macbeth, the news of thy success. The king hath happily, the king hath, the whole thing I will write here, the, the king hath, the king hath uh, happily received Macbeth. The king hath happily received Michael. You see, the verse says, The news of thy success, the news of thy success. And then something we are leaving out because now we are coming to the point. That is, he finds thee in the stout Norwegian ranks. He finds thee. He finds the, the means you in the stout Norwegian ranks. He finds thee in the stout Norwegian ranks. See? Uh, nothing afear of what they submit me. Nothing appear afear of. Nothing afear of what this is Elizabeth spelling. No, no, I'm not making it. It's not a mistake. Nothing appeared of what thyself did make. Now comes the make strange images of the strange make strange images of that. So here is the dramatic irony. Here is the ambiguity also. Strange images of death. That's the whole play is summed up in this. What is what is the business of Mike Beth in the play? Making strange images of death. One after another he is planning murders and then he's he's murdering them. Assassinating them in cold blood, his own friends, isn't it? His own friends and his comrade, Banco. He wants to annihilate them with fleance along with them. And the king's sons, they all escaped. By Macduff, he escapes. Otherwise, the whole play, in this, this, this plan, this here, this sums up the entire play. So that is the, and also the character, dramatic error, where you have got the ambiguities of meaning. This single line presents an ambiguity. This is a dramatic irony also, it involves irony. I have, you know the story and therefore no further explanation is needed. Alright, so this is in Macbeth, uh, this is the speech by uh, this is how Rose addresses my death. Understand? Making, making strange images of the, the whole play. Then another, uh, that is visually a play that we have already seen. Sing Deidre of Sorrows. Deidre. Sing. Irish play. Zion. S-Y-N-G. Isn't it? The Daidre of Sorrows. Swayen? Yes. See? See? Uh, that is, we say that this, you know, what happens here is that the SOS. The Sing Daidre of Sorrows. So then there are three characters there Naisi, Kohor, and the uh, Naisi, Kohor, and uh, uh, died. 
Esas son tres cartas. Nice. Nice. Cohort. Se pronuncia cohort. C O N C S U B E A. Irish name. Cohort. And then uh, you have what? Uh, died. Died. Died of sorrows. Correct. Then Nice. Died. And I see they are in love. And Kohor, he wants to marry uh, Daitre. But she does not like him and uh, she falls in love with uh, the uh, Naisi. And he chases her and then this is the tragedy. This is the story, very briefly. Now the conversation you will find, see, between them, says, uh, uh, Kohor says, the Lord Kohar Daidra says, Do not raise a hand to touch me. Kohar says. Huh? Not the nah, Daidra says, sorry. She is the lady now. Daidra says, Do not raise a hand to touch me. To touch me. And then Kohor says, when ch u b a r. Kohor says, what does he say? He says that uh, there are other hands to touch you. There are other hands to touch you. My fighters are set in among the trees. Says there are. There are other hands to touch you. My fighters are my fighters are set among the trees. Among the trees. My fighters are set among the trees. Says. Then what happens, you know, what does she say? Who will fight the grave cohort? Who will fight the grave cohort? The address is Who will fight the grave cohort? Who will fight the grave cohort? Say that that the absolute fatalism so to say. Who will fight the grave call? And it and it opened on a dark night. And it opened on a dark night. So this is the dialogue. Here you know this. Daidre, by force, Kohar wants to take Daidre. But he will not get her love or heart. Because she has or she had already given that to Naisi. Now here what happens is that, you know, at the end what happens is Kohar kills Naisi. His rival, Daidre kills herself. And Kohar and his men, they, his wife is dying. So what happens is it is a stark tragedy. Kohor kills Naisi, the lover of uh, Daidre, Daidre, and then Daidre kills herself, and Kohor and his men they die in fighting. So what happens here is what is the ayah? What is the what is the uh, ambiguity in this? Here is one. Who will fight? Who will fight the grave Koho? Who will fight the grave Koho? See the implications there. That means what is in front of us is nothing but a death. Who will fight the grave Koho? Then he says, and it opened on a dark night. The grave opened on a dark night. This is an example for pathetic fallacy. Pathetic fallacy. 
pathetic fallacy is attributing attributing human qualities to non human things now grave opening like mouth opening or we say now leaves dance leaves dance rocks are indifferent rocks cannot be indifferent human sir in the but when you say rocks are indifferent that is pathetic fallacy or leaves dance graves open graves open this is you open your mouth pathetic fallacy so here what happens is dramatic irony and there is ambiguity and also the effect comes on you on human beings by way of pathetic fallacy the feeling is heightened so what is it it means it means that all our calculations will go wrong all life is what is our one strangely frustrated kohor wants to get the love of daisy but what happens is she gives her heart to naisi and naisi is killed so your calculations go wrong life is full of frustration our plans are frustrated all of us are feeble very feeble now when we are surrounded by forces of nature same and uh, when it is that we are all on the same side all the three kahor naisi and dedre the day kahor and is his fighters also day so they are equal by that they become equal till then there is fight there is uh, uh, rivalry then there is competition and all those but we do not know see the irony of the thing nobody knows or we do not know what is awaiting us our life surrounded by frustrations surrounded by forces which are beyond our control we are not control over them you can see when you read newspapers this this so a man getting down from a bus falls under the wheels killed by the wheels of or the wheels of the same bus or car it rolls over the human being what is it it is faith faithless you are nobody and you cannot control anything so the whole story you can see is fraught with the ambiguity was the final you are fighting you are fighting one person is fighting his rival and comes with the power he has got power how he has got power of royal blood and then he has planned the building very well his soldiers are fighters are set among the trees but what happens is everybody is on the one side nobody nobody on the other side to fight after that so this is dramatic irony of the highest order begins also there is uh, the making strange images of that what is macbeth the play macbeth the play is all about making strange images of that dramatic irony ambiguity i hope you are following this so there are seven ways you can see in the first type first as uh, ambiguities of the first type mainly about you can say metaphor because uh, same details affective in several ways at once difference likeness these things you can see they are all involved kind of say either subdued metaphors or metaphors as such then you find the rhythm how rhythm is the last class we saw a houseman's uh, the line on no? fear hate and so on so so that line the how we the how one reading hate is the when you hate when you stress hate one mean when you stress uh, when you divide this into three parts then what will happen is one part will be out indignation will, will stand out see so that we saw how the meaning changes and now after rhythm we find the uh, 
don't like to care. You can easily remember this by making strange images of that night. And also, who will fight the grave cohort? Who will fight the grave cohort? And it opened on a dark night. Who will fight the grave cohort? And it opened on a dark night. That is, I hope it is clear. Some of these uh, observations made by William Emerson is really, you, you should understand that he wrote this when he was just 24 years old. So that itself is a point of attraction for us to read this. Although it is voluminous, means I must, I wonder, in, in voluminous in what sense? Plenty of examples. I have given you only, what I should say, uh, just a kind of taste of it. Taste. Some books are to be tasted. Just given you some examples for you to taste. If you want to drink deep, definitely you must open the textbook and then start reading the book as it. So I think this will be an invitation to you. My introductory lectures, these are only introductions I should say, because I am not taking all the examples. So my these introductory lectures are a kind of invitation to you. The taste is given. Now you can open the book and read and enjoy the I don't want the sweep, you know, the sweep. Uh, the, uh, the, the book is so not many pages, it's not that thing, but the example, the sweep of the examples of the different. Understand? That is, so it is very attractive. I must say that you should read the text and uh, enjoy the book. And we will pass on to the next uh, type of ambiguity in the next class. Till then, bye. Have a nice time. Enjoy your life. Hope that you are following what I have been telling you and you are enjoying more. So, in that case, you should share this with your friends and also subscribe to my channel. Bye.